okay so sir is going to talk to us today about the role of geospatial technology in research and development may i now request our deputy director dr g kumaresan sir to please welcome professor t subramani with a bunch of flowers so we are very happy that you have joined us today and we hope that our students will be highly inspired is it okay yeah yes. i think it's okay so please accept this Thank small you, bunch sir. of Thank flowers you, as a token of our appreciation the session is all yours now thank you sir thank you madam thank you good morning to all of you so at the outset i would like to thank the organizers dr umarani madam dr kumareshan sir dr saundar naik madam and soba madam for uh, giving me this opportunity so let us uh, go to the presentation part so this role of geospatial technology in research and development so this is an important uh, uh, topic actually if you see uh, what is geo first you will see what is geospatial technology so then you will see the application part so here geospatial technology is nothing but so combination of these three you have remote sensing plus global positioning system gps and the third one is geographical information system so all three put together called geospatial technology so first we will see the remote sensing part then we will move on to global positioning system then finally we will see the geographical information system it's of course this last one is related to software software oriented information system so in the modern world knowingly or unknowingly everybody is using this technology everyone is using this technology this is useful to common man to military it has wide applications so let us see that so here you can see let us start from the bottom so we are using various type of scanners nowadays we are using various type of scanners so we are using radar we are using lidar then uh, for earth observation we are using different types of uh, aircrafts uh, then drones we are using satellites then we have special satellite for positioning and navigation of course you all know about the gps global positioning system then finally so the data can be analyzed with the help of gis geographical information system now the first part is remote sensing so here in the case of remote sensing it may be divided into two major parts so the first one is aerial remote sensing and the second one is satellite remote sensing why this is called aerial remote sensing our platform will be kept in the atmosphere so we all know that above our earth we have atmosphere so approximately up to 700 kilometers we have atmosphere so if you go beyond the atmosphere there won't be any gravitational attraction okay so if you go beyond the atmosphere it is known as space right so here in the case of aerial remote sensing these are all the famous platforms so aircrafts then you have helicopters and then air balloons nowadays we are using drones then in the case of uh, satellite remote sensing we are using spacecrafts spacecrafts are nothing but satellites now coming to the aerial remote sensing so there are two major uh, types of uh, aerial photography so one is called vertical aerial photography and the second one is called oblique or inclined aerial photography so in the case of vertical aerial photography so the camera axis will be perpendicular to the ground surface so camera axis will be like this and will be taking the photograph right the area exactly below the aircraft will be photographed this was introduced initially this was introduced in defense then they introduced this oblique aerial photography are inclined aerial photography what we can do is we can tilt the camera axis so that we can cover the area which is far away from the aircraft so this was introduced in the defense particularly to know the enemy's movement in the international border in the other side of the territory so along the border what happens in the enemy's area so troop movement bunkers are there so many things you can get so for that purpose we can tilt the camera axis deliberately or intentionally we are tilting so this was introduced in the defense now we are using for various applications then this is how the photography is done so this is the aircraft so every country is having specially designed aircraft for this particular remote sensing applications see 
so in India we have Canberra, Cessna, there are so many aircrafts are available. So what uh, we are going to do is, so this aircraft will move and say in one snap this much area is covered. In one single snap, so this much area will be covered. So here you can see, so the aircraft will be continuously moving like this and it will be taking photos. And uh, between two photos, for example, if you take the first photo and second photo, there will be a common area. Around 60% area will be repeating. So this is called overlap. This is known as overlap. So this overlap is deliberately given to get 3D from the aerial photos. So otherwise you cannot get 3D view from the aerial photos. For that purpose, this overlap is given. So finally, you will get the photos like this. So this is called aerial photos. This is called aerial photos. Nowadays we are getting color photos also. Then mostly the size size will be around 23.5 centimeter by 23.5 centimeter in most of the cases. Then after getting the photos, so what we can do is, so we can keep the photos under the instrument called stereoscopes. There is an instrument called stereoscope. So we have different types of stereoscopes. So if you view through this stereoscope, you can get 3D view. So you can feel that you are flying above the area. So you can get the bird's eye view or panoramic view. So this will be very much useful for various planning and development activities. So this is called stereoscopes. Different types of stereoscopes are available. Here in the last one is actually zoom stereoscope. You can zoom a particular area and you can study. Then nowadays we are living in the wire free world, wireless technology or similarly here they are using digital photogrammetry or soft copy photogrammetry. So for your information, so Rana University is having IRS, Institute of Remote Sensing. So we are best in the uh, Asia, this photogrammetry is concerned. We have excellent equipments, right? So this soft copy photogrammetry means we need not use any stereoscope. From the computer screen itself, you can get 3D, right? You have to wear this glass and you can get 3D from the computer screen itself, from the photos. So here you can see our students are getting 3D from the computer screen. Then you can prepare maps, so you can go for uh, volume computation, you can use the data for various applications. So this is the modern technology. Then next important component in the case of uh, aerial remote sensing is radar. You all know about radar, radio detection and ranging. So this radar concept was uh, introduced before uh, World War II, mostly by British. So during World War II, British, German, US, France, Russia. Only five countries were using this particular technology to identify the enemy's aircraft. So still this in defense, this radar is very common. So India is getting a lot of radars from Israel and other uh, countries. So here this is very simple. So <coughs> what will happen? One transmitter will be there. This will continuously emit the signal. Then receiver will be there. This is to receive the signal. Then this signal, initially radio waves were used. The radio waves will fall on the object and it will be backscattered. Then backscattered uh, light or waves will be recorded by the device receiver. Then this will be processed by the computer. Then in the screen, this will be displayed. How many aircrafts are there? How many aircrafts enter into our territory? Then it will be attacked. So far, this, this was introduced during Second World War. Now I will tell you the concept. This concept is very simple. Nowadays, people are using microwaves and other waves. So the advantage of microwave, you all know about this, microwave is, uh, if you see the wavelength, it is approximately 1 mm to 1 meter. Even a small object can act as a barrier for microwave. Even small object can backscatter the, this microwave energy. So here, this radar can be kept on a tall tower or it can be mounted in the aircraft. So what will happen, this receiver will continuously emit the microwaves. The microwaves will be falling on the enemy's aircraft. Then the backscattered waves will be received by the receiver kept in the same radar and this, radar, this receiver will send the signal to the computer, computer will process the data and this computer is connected with the missile. So missile will try to follow the enemy's aircraft according to the signals received from the radar. Finally it will attack the enemy's aircraft. So this was introduced during second world war. Now every country is having this technology. Okay. then. Coming to the drones, so now this drone technology is very very popular. When you space, uh, when you say geospatial technology, this drone will come into the picture. 
So drones, so he, this is, this will come under the category of UAV, unmanned aerial, or unmanned aerial vehicle, okay. So here in drones, we can uh, keep any kind of instrument for various applications, right. We can uh, fix the RGB, red, green, blue camera, or you can go for multispectral cameras, or you can fix LIDAR, light interference detection and ranging, or we can uh, go for uh, subsurface imagers, some uh, GPR, GPR can be kept in the uh, drones. So there are a lot of advantages. So the advantage is we can fly just above the terrain, not like aircraft, okay. Then high resolution can be obtained, then high accurate data we can get, quick, much faster, less expensive and as atmospheric disturbance will not be much when compared with the aerial platform like uh, aircraft or helicopters, then site specific study can be studied, can be done. So these are all some of the major advantage of drones. So this is how we will carry out the drone survey. So you can see here, so this much area is covered in one particular snap. Nowadays nobody is using camera, they are using sensors. We are not using camera, we are using sensors. In different spectral region we are studying the terrain. Then quickly we will see the applications. One of the important um, sector is agricultural field. So now everybody is talking about smart farming concept. Okay, the drones are used for various applications. So applying fertilizers, pesticides, even you can study the uh, say soil moisture content, what is the organic content of the soil, then seed rate, so everything can be monitored. And how to plant the, um, uh, say, how to fix the seeds in a regular interval, everything can be done with the help of drones. Then, geophysical subsurface studies, subsurface exploration for geotechnical applications, right, for geological exploration, mineral exploration, so many applications nowadays we are using drones. Geoscanning, it is called geoscanning. So, various instruments, for example, here you can see electromagnetic sensors in the left hand side. You can see in the drones, there are electromagnetic sensors. In the right hand side, you can see aeromagnetic survey. So magnetometer or gravimeter can be kept in the drone and we can conduct the survey and you can get the uh, detail about the subsurface. Whether any hidden material is available or any ore deposit is available, even oil deposits are available. So whatever it may be. Then I told you about this LIDAR. We can go for LIDAR imaging. Then we can fix the GPR, ground penetrating radars, for various applications we can use. Then people are using these drones for archaeological studies. Then, then finally, you can get images like this. For example, this uh, <coughs> corner you have, LIDAR image. Then you have to interpret the images. You can go for 3D models. It is known as digital elevation model or digital terrain models. You can get the 3D view of the area. Then you can see here digital elevation model. You can get digital contours. You can get 3D models. Then you can go for your applications. Then for marine, also for bathymetry survey. So the to get the sea bottom profile, people are using this kind of uh, study. Then geotectonic mapping, how the plates are moving and whether the earthquake can happen. Tsunami can, can happen in a particular area. So you can get these type of uh, images of the ocean floor for various applications we will, we will be doing this. Then disaster mitigation. This is one of the major areas. So for forest fire study, we are using this drones. Then for uh, <coughs> earthquake disaster management, people are using this drone technology. So when you talk about uh, the disaster management, so after post disaster management is concerned, India is on the top. We are really doing excellent job after the disaster. Even we are in the top, even US is in the bottom. But pre-disaster management is concerned, we are in the bottom. So this is the poor scenario. So after uh, something happens, so everybody will rush into the spot, even the common public will help. But uh, before uh, the disaster, we are not doing any kind of activities. So this disaster management, then tsunami inundation modeling, flood monitoring, we can use this drone technology. Then nowadays aquatic drones are also used. So here you can see the aquatic drones for various purpose. 
so monitoring the siltation in dams then to monitor the flow even to collect the waste from the water bodies so you can get the water samples water quality monitoring online sensors are there online water quality monitoring can be done with the help of this geospatial technology then mining activities so mining activities you can monitor and you can uh, go for volume computation suppose this is the dump yard so how much quantity of material is available in the particular dump yard you can uh, study then uh, mine planning development blast monitoring even for underground tunneling people are using this drones then once you obtain the data then you have to process the data with the help of gis software so this this is the device and the, in this particular device is known as platform in this platform some sensor will be there sensors will be collecting the data then the data has to be processed then land surveying cartography cartographical applications cadastral mapping you can go for large scale cadastral mapping then uh, road construction planning landslide disaster mitigation studies then i'll tell you about later about this point cloud now everybody is talking about point clouds particularly computer science engineers will be knowing about this point cloud so i have some slides i'll tell you what is point cloud so we will get the we have to study the analyze the point cloud data then landfill so if you have municipal waste disposal site so you can calculate how much volume of material is available in that then for coastal zone management people are using this for urban planning so even this gis can be called in uh, called in different names in different areas for example this can be called as land information system lis sometimes it is called as urban information system uis so people are using different names but everything can be brought under the single umbrella gis geographical information system then to rescue swimmers people are using this technology then of course now for goods delivery people are using drones so to deliver the goods and uh, for drug delivery they are using this uh, drones so geospatial means it is connected with what so location so spatial information is very very important so where to deliver what's the exact location of that particular spot latitude longitude so then only it can reach and it can deliver okay so data can, if it is available in the form of table your data is available in the form of table or text there is no use at all okay geo tag should be given so site specific or location so lat in terms of latitude longitude altitude and time the four components are very very important when you talk about uh, geospatial technology latitude longitude then altitude height then time all the four components are so very very important then near future it will come to our chennai also this passenger drones this will be guided with uh, satellites gps and other sensors okay so we can fly and we can go to the some places for example i want to go to chengalpet what i can do i can use drones and i, I can go there so this technology will come to our chennai also in near future then this geospatial technology is now widely used in military spy purpose you see different types of drones are available different size different shapes okay available in the market particularly used in the military purpose and also for spy purpose of course recently you might have seen in the news okay this drone has killed somebody who was standing in uh, the building in afghanistan american drone has attacked and killed that particular person so what this drone will do it will like a bird it will fly above your head and it will attack your head so this is the military drone this is actually famous drone called as predator so yes uh, drone then pouring tear gas people are using this so why geospatial technology is uh, important is so location is very very important so map high resolution highly accurate map is important okay then say underwater drones underwater drones are used by various advanced countries particularly in the uh, military field okay so this uh, uh, russia ukraine war people are using lot of unmanned aerial vehicles lot of drones so the now the uh, war war is totally different not like your second world war or first world war if you have lot of manpower there is no use at all 
you have number of soldiers there is no use at all now we are seeing in the russia ukraine war so the technology plays a major role so technology is very very important so this geospatial technology is widely used in military field also now you see the drones sub underwater drones submarine drones some of these drones are supplied to ukraine by british to identify the enemy's submarine enemy's air sorry warships and then they can plan how to attack okay here you can see like a bird you see the right corner like a bird you can see so different shapes different size then micro drones so in this kind of thing all the branch of engineers are involved mechanical engineers civil engineers then uh, electric electronic all are involved in this everything is interdisciplinary now you see here the drone size of the drone and shape of the drone it look like a dragon fly it will be there in somewhere maybe in the hall and it will send the details to the somebody high uh, resolution camera will be there it will be continuously sending the data to somebody okay particularly in the war field so for that purpose this type of small like a bee you see very small small drones are used by various people nowadays micro drones this will come under micro drones so this is about the aerial remote sensing part the next part is the satellite remote sensing so everybody is launching satellites you all know that so in india isro isro is responsible for launching the satellites indian space research organization so like that in america nasa is there national aeronautical space administration so roscosmos is there in russia so different agencies are there they are responsible for sending the satellites again satellite is a kind of platform right it is nothing but a space platform where we are fixing the sensors where we are fixing different types or and varieties of sensors so you can see this is a platform then you have scanners or sensors then when you talk about uh, the types of remote sensing based on source because it's a very major topic even mtech course is uh, there but uh, within few minutes maybe 10 minutes i have to explain so i have given the fundamental things so one is called passive remote sensing and another one is called active remote sensing so passive means we are using the natural source sunlight sunlight is the source but during night time sunlight may not be available so night time this remote sensing is not possible in the case of passive so active means we are using we are producing energy we can produce energy so night time also it is possible to do remote sensing for example like a, a camera with flash if you don't use your flash then it is passive remote sensing if you use camera say flash if the light is not sufficient you will be using the flash it is called active remote sensing so in the case of active remote sensing people are using um, say microwaves and other artificial light artificial light will be produced like radar radar is the best example for active remote sensing then coming to the satellites so we must know because if you take isro they are recruiting all the people they are recruiting civil engineers geologists physicists mechanical easy everybody is working in uh, isro projects so here if you see the satellites there are three or four major categories of satellites so if you see the first group of satellites are called polar orbiting satellites known as sun synchronous satellites so these satellites will be placed just above the atmosphere so above 600 kilometers or 700 kilometers these platforms will be placed so most for most of the purpose people are using this type of satellites for earth resources applications these satellites are used for earth resources applications even ocean ocean studies land studies so example irs irs is our own satellite indian remote sensing satellite we have 1a 1b 1c 1d we have ocean sat carto sat we have n number of satellites now then landsat is a famous american satellite then spart famous french satellite icnas again american satellites now quickbird there is a satellite called quickbird with higher resolution is available okay google maps you are getting google maps every day you are seeing no how will you get based on this then second type of satellites are called geostationary satellites so these satellites are at higher height see so if you see the orbit height of the orbit it is about 36000 kilometers above the equator geostationary so example insat we have insat 
1A, 1B, 1C, 2E, we have INSAT. So these satellites are especially used for telecommunication. ECE people may be knowing about that. Lot of transponders will be there. For telecommunication, your mobile communication and weather forecasting, these type of satellites are launched. Then navigational satellites, GPS, global positioning system satellites. I think India is the fifth country having own GPS system. India is, have, is the fifth country. Only five countries are having GPS, own GPS system, right? So this is the, about the GPS satellites and of spy satellites. Lot of spy satellites are there. We are not going to discuss about this because they will not give any details about the spy satellites. Now, if you see the geostationary satellites, I told you, so these satellites are launched above the equator at the altitude of 36,000 kilometers. Why this is called geostationary? So this, for example, if you take our INSAT, this INSAT will continuously monitor India and surrounding. You know that India, what happens? Earth is moving with respect to, it is revolving, isn't it? And also it is rotating it with respect to its own axis. So accordingly, this satellite should also rotate. It should revolve. So then only it can continuously monitor India. So in such a way, this orbit is designed. Example is your INSAT. Then for weather forecasting, people are using this type of satellites. You might have seen in the news, inside picture shows clouds over this area, that area, you might have seen in the news. Then the second group, polar orbiting satellites. So these satellites will travel from one pole to another pole. So night time, sunlight will not be available here in this part of the earth. So it will go to the other part where the sunlight is available. So that is why it is called sun synchronous satellites. So these satellites will move from North Pole to South Pole, South Pole to North Pole, Earth is rotating, so it will sweep the Earth. So this is called polar orbit. So here you can see polar orbit and this is the geostationary orbit. Of course, we have, we have to use launch vehicles. Again, different people, even metallurgy is very important. What type of material we are using. So each and every component is important. So, for example, there is a metal called molybdenum. It is discovered by Geological Survey of India in uh, Arur Uthangarai belt. It is available far below. We don't have technology to mine that particular deposit. Similarly, platinum is discovered in Namakal district by Geological Survey of India. Definitely, if technology is there in future, definitely we will be starting underground mining. Platinum is a costly product. Similarly, molybdenum. So, if you add few drops of molybdenum with steel, iron, what happens? The strength is enormously increased. So we are, they are preparing lot of uh, materials for defense, tanks, missiles, aircrafts. Again, aircrafts which, uh, should withstand the pressure. So aluminum cannot withstand. So you have to mix this metal with the steel, iron, then only our aluminum, then only the strength will be enormously increased. Then the vehicles are concerned. So vehicle development is very important. So these three vehicles are available in our India, PSLV. Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, we are number one in the world. PSLV is concerned, we are number one in the world, there is no failure at all. Even one PSLV vehicle can lift 100 number of satellites. More than 100 plus satellites can be launched in one, one launch. So we have excellent technology, even the advanced countries are sending their satellites to India to launch. Okay? Then the second one is GSLV, Geostationary Satellite Launch Vehicle. So, no, but no country was interested to give this technology to India. No country was interested to give this technology to India. Then India has developed its own cryogenic engine. Now we have this technology. So, reason is, so if you have this technology, you will develop intercontinental missile. So, instead of sending the satellite vertically, if you send the nuclear bomb laterally, what will happen? You can attack any part of the world. Am I right? So that is why no country was interested to give this GSLV technology to India. Now we have this technology. We have intercontinental missiles. Agni-5 is available with us. With nuclear warhead, it can attack even 8,000 kilometers. Similarly, K, K series, Kalam series of missiles are available, which can be launched from the submarines. Okay? So this technology is available. Then SSLV, small satellite launch vehicle. ISRO has tried very recently, but uh, uh, not able to succeed this. At the last moment, there was a failure. Not able to place the satellite in the uh, orbit. So maybe within 48 hours, they will develop this SSLV vehicle. We have that much capability. So we have different launching vehicles. 
Then if you see the satellites or the satellite data products, this is called satellite images. You should not call it as a satellite photo. This is not a photo. It's an image or it's a picture. Picture is a general term. Here it is made up of pixels. So satellite images are made up of pixels. Like our uh, mobile. Using mobile you are taking the pic picture. Or it will be in the form of image. Image is nothing but it is made up of pixels. Pixel is nothing but the picture element. Okay. So the size of the pixel is very, very important. If the size of the pixel is small, then the clarity will be better. That's why while purchasing the mobile phone, what you are asking? What about the megapixel? You are asking, isn't it? If the size of the pixel is small, obviously the clarity will be better. Same thing here. So in olden days, if you see the Landsat, Landsat 1, similarly our IRS 1E and all, the resolution was around 80 meters. 80 meter means the size of the pixel is 80 by 80. If you take one pixel, the size of the pixel will be 80 meter by 80 meter. 80 meter by 80 meter area will be covered in one pixel. Then they have improved. Then it was reduced. In the case of SPOT, this was reduced. SPOT has two famous sensors, PLA and MLA, multispectral scanning uh, scanner and panchromatic, black and white. Uh, in black and white, it was about 10 meters. Then we launched the satellite called IRS-1C. Further, we improved the resolution, having the, the resolution of 5.8 meters. We were best in the world at the time. We were best in the world. Then later, Americans introduced this satellite called ICNAS, having the better resolution of 1 meter. 1 meter resolution. Size of the pixel will be 1 meter by 1 meter. Even the car, which is parked in front of your this building, can be identified from the satellite. So 1 meter by 1 meter pixel. Then QuickBird having the resolution of 0 0.61 meters, 61 centimeter. Then we introduced the satellite called TESS, Technology Experimental Satellite, having the resolution of 0.5 meters. We are best in the world now. Having 0.5 meter pixel, 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter pixel we can have. For the earth resource application, I am telling. Okay? So you can see the clarity. Here, what happens here? 30 meter pixel we are not able to see clearly. Then here it is 10 meter pixel, we are able to see the roads and all. Then here 5.6 meter pixel, IRS-1C, then Iconas. Even you can see the individual buildings. Even you can find the rooftop area. Now the government of Tamil Nadu is asking, so to assess the tax, they are using this data. Revenue department is using this data. How much tax a particular building owner is paying? Based on the rooftop area, you can calculate the area, whether he is paying the correct tax or not. We can, without going to the field, you can do that. So, with the help of this high resolution satellite image, you can find out the rooftop area. Then again, the construction of buildings, we should not suppose to construct the building very close to the coastal area. You cannot cheat anybody, if you have this data. You can take the satellite image and you can measure the distance and you can find out whether the structure is properly constructed or not. So many things you can do with the help of this geospatial technology. Then another important thing is digital image processing. Mostly the computer science people will be knowing about this. Mathematics people will also know about this. Digital image processing. So you have to process the image because your satellite is far above. In between you have atmosphere. Clouds will be there, mist will be there, dust will be there, smoke will be there. So there will be a lot of disturbance. So you have to process the data. So image processing is nothing but to increase the quality of the picture, to enhance the quality of the picture, you will be using some kind of algorithm or some kind of software. It is known as digital image processing. For example, in TV, if the picture is not clear, what we are doing? We are increasing the contrast, we are increasing the sharpness, we are increasing the brightness. Same way, here there are so many techniques to enhance the quality. So level slicing is there, density slicing is there, edge enhancement is there, Fourier analysis people are using. So many techniques are there to enhance the quality of the picture. Not only in this particular field, even this image processing is widely used in medical field. Doctor is scanning our body. They will be getting the image, CT scan, MRI scan, what are those things? Finally, you will see the image in the monitor, isn't it? If something is there, some tumor is there inside, Doctor has to identify, the image clarity should be very clear. So for that purpose, what you should do is, so we have to increase the clarity of the image. 
Now everything is image based. I, I have some slide I will tell you. Now everybody is dealing this type of data. Image based. Whatever it may be, you are taking the photo immediately. It will be available in the form. Not photo, it is a picture, image. This has to be processed. Then you see this is the excellent image. Anna University viewed by ICNAS, ICNAS satellite, 1 meter resolution. You can identify the uh, buildings. So you can identify, uh, say, ground, then you have Sardar Patel Road, even flyover is there, Kodur Brum Road is there. You see that uh, orange color is actually a swimming pool. At the time, there was no water. That is why reflection is high. So all, everything, even uh, river is there. Adaya River is there. Near the Adaya River, that uh, wall is there. Compound wall is constructed. Everything you can identify. Red mark, red point, red Okay. Okay. See, so everything, even uh, just below the ground, you can see there is a line. It is nothing but a canal. Even you can see the depth. It indicates is a small channel, right? So details you can get from the ICNA satellites. Quick bird is 0.6, one uh, meter resolution. So excellent images you can get for a particular area. Then next come part is GPS. We have so far we have discussed about the remote sensing part. Then the remote sensing is related to drones and satellites, right? Then next important thing is the GPS, global positioning system. So first GPS was introduced by um, uh, US people in the name of Navstar. So this GPS will tell where you are, where exactly you are. Suppose you are in Indian Ocean, somebody is asking you where you are, what will you tell? I am in Indian Ocean, you cannot tell like that. You have to tell in terms of latitudes and longitudes, am I right? So similarly where to go, how to go, how to reach that particular place. You have solution, this global positioning system and of course you have so many applications. So 3D positioning, so latitude, longitude and altitude you can get. So everybody is using GPS now, it is available in your mobile phone. Then for GPS, how it works? Actually you have to get signal from minimum 3 number of satellites. Then only you will get your location. Okay? So for example you are standing somewhere, <coughs> so in India. If you switch on the instrument, your GPS receiver will receive signal from satellites. So it will receive signal from minimum three number of satellites. So the intersection of signals will be your location. So this satellite is sending one signal, this satellite is sending another signal, this satellite is sending third signal. So the intersection of signal will be your location of the receiver. Okay. So here generally we will work with four coordinate system. So X, Y, Z and T. So time is another important parameter. So precise measure for precise time measurement, atomic clock will be there in GPS satellite, not your quartz clock. Okay. So X, Y, Z, and T global position. This is about global positioning system. So this is about Navstar GPS. Excellent GPS network they have. American military is having excellent GPS network. If you go North Pole, South Pole, anywhere in the world, in the globe, you can get signal. That is the advantage. Anywhere in the world, globe, you can get signal from the minimum three number of satellites. Okay, you need minimum 24 number of satellites for this global network. So they have, I think, 31 number of satellites. They have more than 24. So uh, 20, 30 or 31 number of satellites are now available in the orbit working condition. So here the concept is, so there will be six orbital planes. In the bottom figure, you can see. There will be six orbital planes. In each orbit, minimum four satellites should be there. Four into six, 24. So 24 number of satellites should be there to get global network. You see in the bottom. And of course, you have other, uh, say, uh, communication signals and other things will be there. So this is the important thing. Minimum 24 number of satellites are required for global network. You see how it works. You see you are standing somewhere. Your earth is moving. Okay. So how it is tracking, getting signal from the satellite? Sometimes you will get uh, signals from 3 satellites, 4 satellites, 8 satellites, 9 satellites. So if more number of satellites are visible in a particular place, then the accuracy will be better. So if you receive signal from only 4 number of satellites, obviously the accuracy will be poor. Okay? 
So this is the advantage of this GPS global positioning system. This is about the Navstar GPS facility. So they are especially used using for their military. Of course, some channel is open for the common man. Even we are using the Navstar GPS facility for various uh, applications. But what will happen during war situation, what they will do? They will stop sending signals. So if our warships, if our aircrafts, warships are using this particular GPS, what they will do? During war time, they will stop sending the signals or they will misguide you. So that is why India has realized and India has started developing its own GPS system. In the name of IRNSS, I will, show, I will tell you about that. Then you see how it works. So some control segment will be there. We will not much bother about the control segment or space segment. We will be much bothered about the user segment. So what type of instrument we are using? Whether you are using a single frequency or a small handheld GPS or your GPS available in your mobile or we are going for the high-end GPS for various applications. It depends. Cost is the important factor. Whether your instrument cost is 10,000 or 10 lakhs, it depends. So this person is receiving the signal from the satellites and he can get the signal. So again, cell phone tower, you see. So here you can see the GPS receiver is there. It is receiving signals from the three satellites. If you draw a circle, the intersection of the circle will be your location, your GPS receiver. Then accuracy, if the satellites are very close, then the accuracy will be poor. Geometric dilution of precision. If the satellites are well, well spread, obviously the accuracy will be more. Generally, if you use a small instrument, the accuracy, horizontal accuracy will be uh, 10 meters or 20 meters. The error will be 10 meters. Okay, in vertical it will be double, 20 meters error sometimes you will get. It is ob obviously nonsense for our applications. So that is why we have to go for high-end GPS. That is, actually another concept is differential GPS. It is popularly known as DGPS. Even many people may not be knowing about this. So DGPS, differential global, not digital, not digital global positioning system, differential global positioning system. So what will happen, some differential corrections will be carried out. Some corrections will be applied. How the corrections will be applied? So with, res with reference to this particular reference station, some corrections will be carried out. Now what happens? This reference station is also connected with the satellites. This reference station is receiving signals from the satellites. At the same time, your rover is also receiving the signal. So these two instruments are connected. Now what will happen? So the error will be minimized. That is called differential corrections will be carried out. So some cases what we will do is, if you have lighthouse very close to your location, from the lighthouse beacon signal will be emitted. Sometimes with the help of that beacon signal, with the help of the known reference station lighthouse, some calibration will be carried out by some instrument. So it can work in GPS mode. Otherwise what you will do is, we will go for base and rover system. Simultaneously we have to use two systems. One is, one will act as a base, another will be rover. You will roam around that particular area. Both will be receiving signals from the satellites and both the instruments will be connected, interconnected to carry out. So differential corrections in order to get the accuracy. So I told you about the GPS. So Americans, they introduce Navstar GPS. Then Russians, they introduce in the name of GLONASS. Very famous GLONASS network, Global Navigational Satellite in the year 1995. Then they develop, they introduce all the 24 number of satellites in the year 2011. So they have excellent GPS network now. These two countries are very famous, you know, US and America. So even uh, very famous Samsung, your uh, Sony Ericsson, they are also using this GLONA signal. Then next to that, Galileo was introduced in the orbit, Galileo GPS by the European Space Agency. They have more than 30 number of medium earth orbit satellites to provide global network. So this is also working perfectly. Then Japan is having, uh, it's not a global, it's a regional navigational system. Japan is having quasi-zenith satellite system. Then Chinese, of course, they are trying to rule the entire world. They are introducing so many satellites. I think now they have 20 number of satellites in the name of BDS. So their GPS mission is known as BDS. But it is not, again, it's a regional coverage, regional navigational system. It is not a global only three are global. One is Navstar US, second one is GLONASS Russians, Galileo European Agency. Then these two are regional. Then the fifth country is having GPS facilities, our India. So this is our GPS. 
So now our tanks, Arjun, Arjun tanks and other equipments, warships are guided by this IRNSSS, Indian Regional <coughs> Navigational Satellite System. It is called NAVIC, Indian <coughs> Regional Navigational Satellite System, regional, it is not a global. So this will work perfectly in India and the surrounding. So up to 1500 kilometer in the, from the border it will work. It is a regional system. Still we are developing. So we have only 7 satellites. We have only 7 satellites. Out of 7, 3 are geostationary. I told you geostationary satellites are at 36,000 kilometer height and the remaining 4 are geosynchronous satellites. You see how it works. It will work like this. So it is a regional navigational system, GPS we have. Of course now they are developing the other Gagan. So, so many things, so many development is taking place in the uh, say defense field and also in the <coughs> GPS field. So, this is about the GPS, global positioning system. This is again vast area, I have given the importance. Then applications are plenty. I told you everybody is using this GPS now. You see, to track the vehicle, people are using GPS. So, whether it is a car or a commercial vehicle, whatever it may be, all now the uh, modern cars are fitted with GPS now. Merit. Then emergency vehicles can be monitored, tracked with the help of GPS. Then laser terrain scanning. Again in defense, during Afghanistan war, Americans, they use this particular kind of aircraft fitted with GPS for terrain mapping, laser terrain mapping. So, aircraft will go like this, then the pilot can see the 3D view of the terrain. Okay, particularly the terrain like Afghanistan, you will have lot of ups and downs. Folded mountain is there. To identify the enemy's area, bunkers, they need a high, high accurate maps. So it can generate, quickly it can generate. The pilot can see, right? And he can, if he press the button, it will bombard the area. For pine bombing, they are using this technology. So this is airborne laser terrain mapping. Then volume calculation, topographical studies you can use. So earthen work, uh, sorry, cut and fill calculation, we, we can use GPS. You see now the modern, these mining related <coughs> instruments are fitted with GPS. You can see GPS guided. Then automatic landing, space, uh, spaceships or uh, space craft can land. Okay, automatic guiding will be done with the help of this GPS. So you name any field, GPS will be there now. GPS will be there, satellite technology will be there and GAS will also come into the picture. Now you can see the point bombing, precision bombing they are using. So you see the missiles, now India is having a powerful missiles like uh, BrahMos, isn't it? So Russians, they are using lot of missiles. They, are, they have developed what the missile called Zirkan, you may be knowing about that. So it has the range of uh, 2000 kilometers they are telling and hypersonic. Hypersonic, our Brahmas is supersonic, am I right? So, hypersonic missile, it will travel very fast, even 7 times or 8 times faster than the um, velocity of the sound. It cannot be uh, intercepted by any other missile. We can, sometimes it is very difficult to track also. So, you, this, exactly how to attack that particular place. Precision bombing is very important. So, these things will be guided by the GPS system. Then missiles, aircrafts, then tanks, you can see the tanks, artillery, all are fitted, guided by this missile, uh, this uh, GPS uh, system nowadays. Then mountain climbing, what are the <coughs> applications? Earthquake monitoring, tsunami monitoring and earthquake studies. If you go to Pacific Ocean, they have excellent Pacific warning system. If anything happens in Pacific uh, Ocean, immediately you will receive signal. So, the communication engineers, their role is very important, you have to fix the sensors, if any, so they will identify the geogenic areas where the earthquakes will develop in the ocean bottom and if earthquakes happens, what will, what will happen, tsunami will come next, so immediately the warning will go to the satellite, uh, through satellite the warning will go to the common man, so he can get the signal from the mobile and immediately he can rush from, the, from that particular part, uh, particular place. So, earthquake monitoring we are using. Then, so we have covered two parts. One is remote sensing and the second one is, uh, so GPS and the third one is GIS. So, geographical information system. 
So geographical location is very, very important. So here you can handle any type of data. The advantage of this particular <coughs> software oriented technique, that's why it's called information system. Any kind of data can be handled by this software. Okay. So you know about different types of data. Generally, you have raster data, you have vector data, you have spatial data, you have non-spatial data, you have different types of data. So any type of data can be comfortably handled. For example, so if you have Excel, you cannot uh, handle pictures. You, you cannot handle pictures using your word. Am I right? So this software can handle any kind of data. So that is why this is popular now. Everybody is using this. Everybody is using this GIS now. So you see the applications, whatever the field it may be, so you can use this because it can handle any kind of data and you can develop any number of layers. Any number of layers you can develop, anytime you can integrate, you can overlay, you can superimpose, you can analyze, you can uh, retrieve, anything is possible with the help of this geographical information uh, system. Then different types of maps can be prepared like uh, lines, like zones, different types of maps can be prepared. Then models, 3D models you can get. So you can get digital elevation model or digital terrain model where the grid cells will be developed. Okay, now they have changed the concept. Instead of grids, they are developing triangles, mathematics, triangulated irregular network models. Now they are using triangles, different shapes. Triangles will not be uniform in shape. One triangle may be bigger, one triangle may be small, one may be equilateral triangle. Like that they are using these triangles nowadays. This, that is why it is called triangulated irregular network models. This is not only applicable for uh, terrain related studies for whatever it may be. If it is an image, if you want to develop 3D, then they are using this concept, triangle concept in this. Then, so we have developed some models, our students have developed some models. So this is about the Chitta river basin, a part of uh, near Kutralam area. Excluding hills and valleys, they have developed this model for some applications. Then this is the actual bird's eye view of uh, Chittar. You have Kutralam in the hilly area. Then you have Chitta River. Finally, it joins with uh, Tamarvani River near, near, near Sivalaperi. Then in the bottom, this is a Salem area. You have Serra Hills, you have Kanjamalai. So you have so many hills. You can double, you can get these type of models without going to the field. Without going to the field, you can develop these kind of models. Now, radar is also used in different forms for various earth related, earth resource related applications. We have SAR, synthetic aperture radar, even side looking airborne radar, even for rainfall analysis people are using radar now. Radar concept is used. Then now this is the today's technology. So what happened previously we were using this type of one point. We will use some instrument, it will send one ray, we will concentrate on one point at a time. Right? Now this concept is gone. Now what is millions of points? Your instrument will throw millions of lights at a time. Okay? Millions of lights will be falling on the object. Then immediately point clouds will be generated. Computer technology. So this is the modern technology. Nobody is, even GPS. GPS, if you use GPS, it will give the location of a particular point. Or if you move, what will happen? It will, it will record the position of series of points, then it will be connected, you will get a line and you will trade the track. But here, scanners are used. Laser scanners, LIDAR. LIDAR almost in all fields, whatever the field it may be, whether it is industry or whatever it may be, this LIDAR technology is used. Laser scanning. Okay, I think uh, uh, two, three days back, Danish team, Denmark team has come and uh, we have conducted survey in our uh, uh, ground with the help of state and central government agency. They are able to scan the subsurface with the help of the scanner up to 120 meters it can scan the subsurface. What is available below? It is possible to get their telling. Of course, we have to test it for uh, hard rock areas and different coastal areas, different areas. Uh, Denmark team has come and they have given demonstration. So, probably government of Tamil Nadu is going to purchase that. So, anyway, so that is why this technology is very popular now. Then you will get the point cloud. Point cloud management should be there. Then here you, you see, I told you about the image based system. Now your data is available in the form of image. Now we are handling images, whatever it may be, photogrammetry or remote, aerial remote sensing or satellite remote sensing, whatever it may be. So we are handling the images. Now you see what happened, uh, civil engineers may be knowing about this total station. 
total session is the highest instrument available in the field of survey that they, they were telling they were telling now no okay so now what happened above the total session gps is fitted gps is fitted with total session so in order to get latitude longitude otherwise you have to assume the coordinates every time you have to assume the coordinates while doing the mapping or surveying now total session instrument is fitted with gps so that you can get the real coordinates real coordinates are the coordinates of the real world okay then next i told you these are all the instruments available in the market scanners for all all applications they are using scanners now maybe costly but this is the today's technology so everybody is going to use this lidar concept i told you light interference detection and ranging radar lidar if it is a water it is sonar or echo sounder i'll tell you about sonar also what i told you application whatever it may be the application so industry if you want to map this all the pipelines and all you can use the scanner the entire area will be exposed to the uh, instrument you will get the point cloud you will get the image then you can get 2d or 3d whatever it may be you can get for a particular industry you can ask me i am an industrial engineer what way this technology is going to be useful you can ask even common man is using then accident analysis suppose a high end car rd or bmw something has happened okay so if you want to study this what they will do they will go and fix the instrument they will take the image right the instrument will throw mil millions of lights then they will get the point cloud and they will go to their office and they will process the data how this has happened why a particular person has died in this accident how to improve the system in which uh, side the impact was high the top or the front so they will do the analysis so i told you about this for example this may be industry so if this entire area is exposed to the instrument you can get the excellent 3d model for monitoring purpose and all then topographical survey so if you want to map this entire area it's a highly undulating terrain it will take lot of time it will take lot of time even this task is given to me i will never accept though we have so many modern and advanced instruments it's not a easy task at all okay because so many things are involved preparing a map is not easy so one thing you must understand our earth is like a ball our map is like a horizontal uh, flat sheet you must understand that isn't it so you are seeing the world map like this how you, how they got this map like this our earth is like a ball how can you represent the curved earth surface on a flat sheet you have to use lot of techniques projection systems are there okay cylindrical projection conical projection asymmetry so many things are there okay even uh, different countries are using different kind of projection system in india we are using polyconic projection system americans they are using cylindrical projection system utm universal transverse mercator projection system was introduced by us military during second world war to get excellent maps of the entire world then only you can attack isn't it so so many things are there so this kind of instrument if you have this kind of instrument the entire area can be exposed to this instrument then you see the raw point cloud raw point cloud data you can get these are all the vegetation see there is a road in the center then if you have your uh, photo digital photo digital image you can superimpose for reference then using the algorithm software you can remove the vegetation slowly then barren <coughs> is exposed surface is exposed like this now after removing completely after removing the vegetation your surface will be like this then you can develop uh, contours then you can go for uh, planning and other activities for example this is a dam site okay then you see they have developed digital contour then you can go for other activities similarly this is a mine this is a singularly coal mine so what you can do is at the center you can fix the instrument and you can get the point cloud then you can compute the volume very easy quick either you can use drone or you can use this type of scan station you see point cloud scanner is at the center so the entire area benches you have benches so you can get the 3d you can go for volume computation so how much material is removed from this particular mine not only for mining or civil related applications you see archaeological studies are for various uh, historical places can be monitored and can be documented okay now 
uh, everything is in the digital form for example you know in uh, so many temples so many things are missing and the missing thing will be there in the us museum how they are bringing back you need the data data should be available in the form of digital if you go to french uh, pondicherry there is a institute called french institute of pondicherry so they have records of our temples digital form digital form it is available so so here what happens once you generate point clouds and all you can get these type of say images you can get drawings also you see cad overlay is also possible if you have cad software yes you can use if you have autocad yes you can use 2d drawing you can get excellently quickly very quickly you can get similarly here india gate what happened this india gate is exposed to this instrument even everything is covered then you can get the 2d drawing easy way you can do it right so this is about then monitoring the projects see uh, this bridge construction is there so to monitor that you can use this type of instruments very quickly you can capture and you can monitor so we can even you can get 3d and all so everything is possible now this technology used everywhere tunnels high definition surveying in tunneling so whether it is a metro tunnels we are doing many people are working in this so they are using this particular technology cross section through high definition surveying then comparison between the design and as it is constructed now then another segment is its its is intelligent transport system everybody is now using this technology so we need smart roads we need we have smart vehicles so this technology so every day we are using this every day we are seeing this see there are so many applications okay so collision to avoid collision to avoid accidents so avoid uh, uh, some unfortunate thing in the curves pedestrian crossing so so many things are there even uh, the environmental component can be brought into the picture then real time traffic analysis can be done optimization is also possible i have some pictures you can do this so how the real time gps tracking is done okay so we are seeing only this um, map and uh, um, say guidance from our mobile but behind that so many things are happening so if you want to go to paris your uh, uh, gps your uh, mobile will tell don't go in this beach road you go in this way you will reach in half an hour if you go if you take this road it will take 45 minutes it will it is telling no how it is telling so real time analysis is done real time analysis is done okay it is not a simple uh, thing so then only you will get the proper route okay so here you can see this for emergency situation so something has happened here and that that side route is blocked so immediately he can get the route and finally he can reach that particular spot then danger warning so some accident has happened so drive your vehicle carefully so this will come immediately this will come then here what happened some materials are falling from the truck so drive your vehicle carefully you are getting the information then pedestrian crossing so if you people are crossing the road so they will be given warnings then automated vehicles are there in highways in uh, developed countries they are using this automated vehicles then due to heavy rain road is closed so you cannot go in that way then so some disabled vehicle is there you drive carefully all these things you will get then optimization of traffic flow this done it this can be done with the help of this then for commercial vehicle management system or this uh, public transport system now we are some simply standing in a railway station or in a bus stop you are getting details when the next 21g bus will reach your particular place where you can wait for that bus or you can get the auto and you can go isn't it so real time tracking should be there then only you can get all the details right so these things are done then uh, there are so many applications we have exploration disaster mitigation site location route planning so many applications are there i have uh, given some case studies because of the time constraint so we'll see one by one for various applications you can use this particular technology and of course one uh, important area is the marine exploration marine exploration or marine engineering marine technology is be becoming popular now why because the resources available in our land is already explored already exploited 
already we have discovered all the deposits which are available in the land we have removed also now everybody is looking what is available below ocean because vast area is covered by ocean what is available below this is the technology so actually we have so many research ships research vessels under the control of geological survey of india and national institute of oceanography so these two are the major agencies operating the research ships and this is a small research vessel called sagar purvi then like that we have so many research vessels inside this you have lot of instruments gps will be there echo sounder will be there so many instruments will be there in this is the captain's chamber so inside this so many uh, uh, instruments will be there when i was a student like you i traveled in so many research vessels we have conducted survey uh, in indian ocean bay of bengal and arabian sea then here this is the latest research vessel this this side you can see this is the actually samudra ratnagar latest research vessel available with geological survey of india so geological survey of india india is having a marine wing so they have this research vessel is a korean made research vessel recently they have purchased this research vessel from south korea at a cost of uh, 600 630 crore it's a huge vessel so how many facilities are available so similarly this sagar niti this research vessel is available with nio and naot national institute of ocean technology for various exploration studies we are using this even in this ship you have uh, 10 or 11 floors so many advanced instruments are there even in if you have 1 rupee note indian 1 rupee currency note in the back side of the 1 rupee note you can see one ship is nothing but sagar kenya it is a german built research vessel still it is available okay the people will go uh, enter into the sea they will stay for about 6 months without seeing any land and they will stay inside one crew will go in that crew all the members including doctors will be there doctors will be there civil engineers will be there computer operator will be there geologists will, everybody will be entering into the sea and they will stay there they will collect so many data then finally they will come back to the land then here the important thing is these type of nodules materials are available in ocean these these type of materials are useful for various industries if you don't mine if you close the mining industry what will happen you must close all other industries you must remember this including agricultural industry because the mining industry is supplying raw materials to all the industries if you close this mining industry what will happen you must close all other industries whatever it may be mechanical industry automobile whatever it may be where we are getting raw material so this is an important thing now we are not getting enough material in the land so they are seeing what is available below the ocean you have plenty available now sea floor mining sea bed mining is becoming popular of course unfortunately we don't have the technology even koreans japanese chinese they have excellent technology but india is not having that much of technology now you see as per this niot you see the india is there so in the indian ocean we have this type of deposit this is called polymetallic nodules many metals will be there like a ball black color ball will be there like a potato so in that ball you will have lot of manganese you will have lot of iron you will have lot of nickel you have lot of cobalt so so many metals are there okay only thing is you have to extract the metals so you see the photos they have taken the photos now they are developing technology niot is developing technology we have mou department of mining engineering department of geology and niot we have memorandum of understanding so in uh, mining department they have created a lab excellent lab so how to develop this technology how to mine the ocean floor see these are all the deposits available you see what happens sulfur deposits are there in the under uh, below ocean water then marine fossils we have collected gobal cluster is there so many deposits are available now everybody is having chance opportunity in this particular area then i told you about sonar radar lidar and if it is a water it is sonar so here sound waves are used so echo sounders single beam or multi beam so recently in tutukaran area one uh, uh, research vessel a uh, research ship was used for archaeological studies korkai you know pumbugar korkai pumbugar are inside the ocean or sea shallow marine so we have to to study the ancient life what we have to do we have to start do carry out the survey they are using this type of research vessels you can get the 
so then to know about the current to know about the wave pattern so so many instruments are there you can collect the water samples are there you can collect the water samples at different depths different interval and now india has developed a technology to extract uranium from sea water am i right india has very recently you might have seen the newspaper very recently india has developed a technology to extract uranium from the from the sea water so the great man dr abdul kalam was telling about uh, the uranium importance of uranium our all our nuclear reactors are th- uranium based isn't it but we have plenty of thorium thorium is available in the form of beach sand kanyakumari kerala manavalakurchi we have thorium sands in the form of monocyte thorium ore is called monocyte we have plenty of monocyte you can extract thorium but our reactors are nu- uranium based we don't have uranium we are depending on the foreign countries they are not giving uranium because you will develop nuclear bombs okay so then these type of graph samplers are there you can uh, collect the sediment samples you can collect the core samples the sea bottom so what you can do is with the help of this corer you can piston corer you can collect the core samples finally you will get the core like this in the transparent pvc pipe then you will make into slices then on board laboratory will be there in the research vessel itself tennis court will be there swimming pool will be there excellent restaurant will be there in, in the ship then on board laboratory will be there chemist will be there he will do analysis sample will be collected sample will be sent to the lab freezer will be there then immediately they will do analysis computer engineer will be there to process the data everything will be done see seismic guns these are all the seismic guns are there for even subsurface exploration because we are getting oil lot of oil from where under the ocean floor bombay high bombay high is supplying lot of oil it is available inside the sea so we need a technology to identify it is available 10000 or 20000 feet below the ocean bottom so seismic survey can be done then this type of rov remotely operated vehicles they are using this synthetic aperture sonar i told you about synthetic aperture radar it is used in aircraft here synthetic aperture sonar are, is used then autonomous underwater vehicles are there then this side lot of engineers are working particularly mechanical engineers mining engineers they are working on this particular area to develop the technology to develop develop the instrument to mine the ocean floor deep sea mining so niot is developing this slowly slowly they are developing some kind of instrument you have to mine the deposits so this is the challenging task scuba of course you may be knowing about this even some uh, certified scuba drivers are there self contained underwater breathing apparatus it is nothing but the scuba right then i have 10 more minutes so i'll give you some more case studies related to this geospatial technology so ground water exploration is one of the important area where i have uh, worked lot so you can use this geospatial technology for uh, the ground water targeting or to identifying the ground water potential areas we can say take the satellite image we can prepare so many uh, maps you can prepare uh, integrate the field data and the data available in the uh, organizations government departments then finally you can ask the computer to identify the place for further exploration then we can go to the field and you can do detailed investigation so this we can do even this type of uh, 3d maps you can uh, you can get uh, develop prepare this type of uh, models and all then hydrocarbon exploration again this geospatial technology is used i have produced one phd in this particular area so you can ask me so how it is possible to uh, identify the hydrocarbon hydrocarbon is nothing but oil and gas which is available 5000 or 10000 feet below your satellite is above your head deposit is 10000 feet below how it is possible sir you can ask me am i right so like uh, if you have fracture in your bone how will you identify will you open this skin and see your fracture no you are taking simply x ray am i right you are able to see the fracture same thing what happens so if your uh, hydrocarbon is available 10000 feet what will happen if you have any fractures in the rocks rocks are having lot of fractures so what will happen this oil and natural gas will try to come up it will reach the surface when it reaches the surface it will interact with the soil and it will change the property of the soil so this sensor can sense the soil alteration so if you study the soil alteration if the soil is altered in a particular area what you can do something is there in that particular area 
even small small clues see i told you about the molybdenum deposit in dharmavuri uh, utangar uh, area how they have discovered you will wonder you know the termite termite karya termite mount so they have seen the termite mounds they were uh, termite mounds were aligned in a particular direction they wondered why are the termites have constructed its mount in this particular path they have studied they have taken the samples and studied molybdenum was there then they traced that particular fracture the deposit was far below similarly digby oil field how it was discovered by british people so in olden days they used to go for hunting in the forest area so they went for hunting in the forest area in assam so what happened they followed uh, uh, the elephant footpath finally they reached a small pond where the oil was floating nobody was there what happened to this pond how the oil could floating is there they investigated and they they found dig by oil field still it is producing lot of oil merit so small small clues we can get so same way we have done this hydrocarbon exploration for the kaveri basin then root alignment so what are the root it may be so quickly i will go through this so we have done a project uh, uh, with the help of uh, tamil nadu highways department under pradhan mandri chatak yojana scheme in uh, uh, metur near metur there is a place called palamalai so the tribal people are living on the top of the hill they are demanding for roads for more than 50 60 years so in that day, in that region uh, sandalwood veerappan was living nobody was interested to uh, conduct the survey then when i was working at uh, government engineering college salem so we have done this uh, survey work with uh, modern instruments and this geospatial technology because it's a tough terrain wild animals are there you can see the uh, bushes then finally what we have done is so we have prepared all these type of maps 3d models before entering into the field and we have conducted survey i told you about this type of gps this will work with the help of uh, what is that uh, beacon signal emitted from the lighthouse then this is a backpack model so everything will be inside the bag you can comfortably keep it in your shoulder and you can walk this is a palm top computer or a packet uh, uh, pc and arc pad gis mobile application software is installed okay for mobile mapping application ga software is there is a gps then finally we <coughs> propose this alignment of course this was approved by the central government agencies and now they got the road so this is useful to the society because they they don't have road at all so they got this excellent road for palamalai hills with the help of this modern technology with so many hairpin bends and all we have done then canal alignment so since this project we have submitted to the government of tamil nadu i don't know when they will go, they, they will implement this so this is a tamaraparni area tirunelveli area so we have prepared so many things and finally we have proposed a route so in the right hand side map you can see in the bottom so there is a location this is a weir so we have identified that particular place is nothing but kuravan kulam so there we have to construct a weir and we have divert the excess water towards uh, north east so here in what happens in our um, tamil nadu and in india so if you take uh, 50 years back data or image or map okay so if you take 50 years back map so many tanks were there in in india and tamil nadu so many water bodies now what happen many water bodies were occupied by bus stand and modern buildings many you take velacheri you take tharamani what happens we are constructing houses apartments in uh, say Uh, water bodies and we are crying water is coming water will come and many places uh, channels are blocked so that is a major uh, problem so here what happens during uh, monsoon season so this river one of the important tributaries of uh, tamarbarni namely pachiyar this river is receiving lot of rainfall from the kalakad hills kalakad hills and this river is carrying huge amount of water during monsoon season or rainy season but the tanks adjacent to this river is empty tanks are empty but river is carrying lot of water finally the water is reaching the uh, sea because the, these are all rain fed tanks if rain happens in that particular area then only that particular tank or water body will receive water this is the pathetic scenario so what you have to do is we have to connect all these water bodies with some canal and you have, you have barren land so people can go for cultivation and now the recharge is very poor because so you know the new palengote bus stand is constructed in in a tank even more than half of the tank is occupied by the new bus stand it, it was giving excellent recharge to that particular area 
so now we have occupied yes then underground applications underground tunnel underground uh, cables underground power lines you can use this geospatial technology right then site selection for various applications we can do this so one application i tell you maybe 10 minutes sir okay two minutes started late okay 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 quickly i will uh, finish this then quickly we will see the applications so we have uh, taken this e road city and we have identified the site for dumping the waste we have considered so many things so temples schools and colleges then we have created zone around the drainages uh, say rivers then we have protected the area by creating buffer zones around the important uh, temples and other things then finally we have asked the computer what are the places available for me to dump the waste suppose you are going to bombay you want to stay in a particular place how to choose the place for your stay so you will have, if you have excellent data in your computer you can ask your grandparents parents will tell i have to stay near hospital your children will tell uh, why I, I my school should be very close to that so you can put all the conditions and finally you can ask the computer it will show you these are all the places you can choose for your stay like that you can do then geospatial technology for cell phone tower selection so you see the cell phone towers already existing right you know the area coverage of the particular cell phone tower then where i have to population you know where i have to fix the new cell phone tower it can be done then mapping then this is another project we have done for the tamar bunny so finally we have studied all these things major environmental activities disaster is going on in this particular area then finally we have identified the uh, place for constructing the weir so long back we submitted this proposal then uh, now the government of tamil nadu started constructing this weir once it is constructed uh, this will be beneficial to the farmers and uh, and the industrial even in the industrial people they are using the river water for their applications then for uh, ground water recharge you can use this you can prepare maps integrate the data and finally you can identify the sites for um, new research constructing new research structures and this is for runoff model runoff studies you can use then landslides you can identify the places of course we have done excellent uh, work in uh, uti area because uti is prone for landslide we have done a lot of work but what you should do is interdisciplinary work should be there so what you can do we can identify the place where the um, vulnerable zones we can identify but uh, the ece people should come into the picture and you have to identify the sensor and we have to fix the sensor if something happens real time warning should reach the people so then only ultimate uh, your aim will be achieved then in way for various environmental problems we have used this uh, fireworks we have prepared maps and we have given uh, proper instruction to the authorities so how to uh, solve the uh, issues we have published so many maps and other things even the covid study we have done during covid uh, covid pandemic um, all the industries were closed what happened to the river system whether the heavy metals pollution is increased or decrease it's a uh, really you will wonder after the closing the industries during lockdown what happened all the rivers are diluted the pollutants are diluted system is slowly coming up even you see we are getting lot of rain am i right why maybe due to the uh, impact covid lockdown impact if you don't disturb definitely you will get all the benefits by the nature so we have evidence so we have published paper you see in 14.24 the impact factor hazardous material elsewhere we have published this study very recently in the year 2021 then similarly so another study covid related study we have done and we have published this work then we have come to the last part maybe i will take 2 minutes or 3 minutes then finally the defense te- sector so this is the talk of the day so they are involving so many people after this uh, russia ukraine war armenia azerbaijan war so the scenario is totally different totally different russia is struggling they they are, they are not able to capture uh, ukraine because more than 40 countries are pumping their modern technology and uh, instruments 40 countries are supporting to uh, ukraine technological war is going on really so this geospatial technology is widely used in defense and intelligence now this is the tecta- sector you see what happens you the see the soldiers they are processing the data how to attack so we have to process the data 
so whether it's an aircraft or it's a ship or it's a drone whatever it may be you need this geospatial data geospatial means it means it is tagged with the location so immediately it should be processed then in the war field then another thing is artificial intelligence so geo dot ai this is famous now this is the talk of the day this is the future so geo you see geo ai geospatial artificial intelligence so lot of activities are going on geospatial artificial intelligence in future even china is uh, placing lot of robots in the tibet by in, in the, in the uh, ladakh border why they are using machines to fight okay this is the thing robots you see multifunctional robots are there in battlefield so geospatial technology is very important terrain condition is very important so location is very important then only you can so move further then here you see the artificial intelligence so this is the uh, future okay i think i have completed this and of course i have conducted so many workshops and conferences with the support of aict and uh, dst nrms in our uh, uh, university geospatial technology in the name itself you see geospatial technologies the government of india is sponsoring money to conduct this to promote this technology so of course i have conducted some programs then of course uh, so recently in southeast asia i am in uh, rank number 13 in the groundwater research professor ilango my guide is on the top because they have taken 50 years data 1972 2020 1970 even my data but this after that so they have taken for the past 15 years i am doing research but they have taken the past 50 years data anyway then of course this is about uh, my details for contact so thank you i think uh, so if you have any queries questions i am available here in this campus anytime you can ask me and uh, raise your doubts if you have any queries you can ask me because it is a very vast area very vast field so it is very difficult to cover in uh, this one and a half hours if you have any queries please you can raise yes sir yes uh, in the isro they have a website bhuvan bhuvan website is there so what they are doing is they are uh, providing data in that particular bhuvan website so you can you can take the data or you can add the data also they have developed lot of mobile apps they have developed lot of mobile apps then with the help of mobile app if you if you can inform them and you can collect the data and you are able to upload your data in that particular bhuvan uh, uh, website and anybody can use that do we have a community within anna university to collaborate geo i mean special and computer science department its any projects that of students are being because uh, independently they are doing okay independently people are doing if there is going to be umbrella of the projects that will be the yes definitely it's what we feel yes, yes. machine learning deep learning yes yes independently doing i am doing some kind of research what resource they are doing irs they are that doing that is happening but uh, interdisciplinary research is yes, the most yes. that's what yes. we feel yes okay. should be done yes yes yeah Uh, sir, actually, you have explained uh, the moisture content of the soil also can be measured with uh, drone. Yeah, sensors. Yeah. Obviously, based on sensors, we are doing. So, can we know the what is the limitation? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. What depth it can measure the moisture? Sir, so for example, for example, if you use GPR, so we have excellent GPR. It can go up to even 30 meters. GPR can go up to 30 meters. Now, 30 meter. Uh, accuracy gps are available if it is 20 meter it is good gps is working good but based on so many other things also we can uh, understand the moisture and the soil composition for example so if soil is having lot of organic matter organic matter is a, nothing but a vegetable matter isn't it yes. so generally it will be black in color and if the light is falling on that particular organic matter organic matter will absorb the light obviously the amount of light reflected by the soil will be less if the soil is having lot of organic matter okay. similarly if you have lot of iron oxide what lot of iron oxide will absorb light so the amount of light reflected by the material will be less based on that you can guess yes it is having poor nutrients mm -hmm. like that you can guess similarly if any surface is wet what will happen it will absorb light 
if the surface is dry or the material is dry obviously the amount of light reflected by the material will be more so based on that indirectly we are doing so it's uh, like an optical phenomenon yes yes okay. uh, one more thing sir this uh, you have expressed uh, dennis tvs came and on yeah, this yeah. ground only it was uh, checked up to 120 meter it yes. was investigated actually yes. the sapsa test data yes. they have demonstrated but uh, we do not know really about the instrument so next visit they are uh, going to some tiruvallur area and they are they are going to uh, do some kind of study then they are going to the coastal area and they will do one more study then after that then after that only they will purchase the instrument it's a curiosity we just wanted to know what kind of equipment they have used ah uh, yes uh, mm, now they are uh, testing the instrument after that they have assured that uh, we are ready to take the students and research scholars and to give a kind of demo okay sir thank you okay, okay. thank you due to the time limitation we'll stop the question session now so during tea break uh, uh, if at all if you want to ask any questions you please uh, you can interact uh, with our speaker so thanks for your uh, wonderful speech uh, thank you sir uh, and uh, uh, from this uh, session uh, we come to know that where we are standing anna university where you are standing the top one person professor ilango and uh, you are uh, uh, like uh, in the top 20 top 15 person So you've done an excellent job. Uh, so from this uh, presentation, uh, uh, so I want to say one point. Uh, like uh, with the help of the latest uh, technology, right? We can do uh, the magic. Uh, like see, recently the IIT Madras uh, they developed an algorithm. Algorithm uh, uh, to how to control uh, uh, the crowd uh, uh, during uh, like uh, the large number of uh, people gatherings. Like uh, you might have noticed. Uh, Uh, the mumbai bridge collapse the recently like elfin stone uh, bridge collapse uh, this is uh, due to the stampede so and uh, the stampede occurred uh, every year uh, in kumbela and uh, hajj so the iit they developed the algorithm computer simulation and they uh, figured out uh, where the problem arises and uh, with the use of minimal manpower how to control uh, such kind of a tragedy like uh, so uh, with the help of the technology we can do the several uh, things and uh, you have done an uh, excellent uh, job thank you sir thank uh, you that to the societal uh, related uh, the job uh, which you have done uh, excellent thank sir thank you for your wonderful presentation and and we'll take a break uh, uh, 10 minutes break uh, after 10 minutes uh, please uh, assemble all of you here thank you thank you thank you uh, just a uh, minute and uh, i'm sorry so as a token of appreciation now may request our director uh, uh, to present a small moment to our speaker Yeah. <laughs>